Ho 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 sent using open source tools to track elves. I'm Clay Moody, and it's great to be back with you all here at KringleCon this year. You know, on the way up to the castle today on the gondola, I saw that it was negative 40 degrees outside. It didn't say which scale it was, but I'm not really sure it even matters. A little bit about me before we get started with the talk. I'm a retired U.S. Army officer. During my career, I had the privilege of teaching computer science at West Point at the United States Military Academy. At that time, I got to coach the competitive cyber team, which competed in a lot of uh, Capture the Flag uh, competitions, sort of like Holiday Hack Challenge. I was assigned as a researcher with the Army Cyber Institute, where I studied advanced education uh, for technically talented service members. And I was the lead of the Tatooine Office of the Defense Digital Service. It was quite an honor to serve, and I'm glad to be here with you today. I've got a long-running history with Holiday Hack Challenge and KringleCon. I've been a challenge developer what helped design websites in the past. I've play tested some of the challenges and last year I served as a uh, concierge. But this is the first time I've had a chance to be a speaker and I'm really glad to be with you here. You know, some interesting things about me is I really love punch cards, I love puns, Python, and even play testing. Apparently I also like words that start with P. So let's get started with some definitions. What is OSINT? Well, OSINT is short for Open Source Intelligence, and it's defined in the Title 50 of the United States Code. Uh, as you can see on the slide there, as intelligence is produced from publicly available information. Okay, so publicly available. That's what the open part means. Okay, there's other types of intelligence also that we talk about inside the intelligence community, but not necessarily in the, uh, the CTF world or in the cybersecurity world, but we have human intelligence or HUMINT. We've got signal intelligence or SIGINT, and then there's always the famous rumint or rumor intelligence. That's not a real one, but it's a fun thing to talk about. So to get started, you know, if you haven't ever used OSINT tools before, there's a great website called the OSINT Framework. It's run by a gentleman here, shown with his Twitter handle, his um, name is Justin Nordeen, and uh, it's open source for you all, but it's got a great uh, web interface that allows you to pick a Pick a topic in which you're interested and then navigate and expand the tree all the way down to the various tools. And as we go through and talk about some of these tools today, I'll try to reference back where they fall in the OSINT framework for you to get started. So we thank, uh, we're very appreciative of Justin uh, and, and all the open source community for uh, providing tools uh, for us to use like this one. But instead of just talking about tools and how you can use them, let's actually do a couple practical exercises. So. We've got these elves up here at the North Pole, and if they were showing me earlier uh, this week that during the off-season, they were able to go out and follow their favorite rock band, Let It Snow. Well, Let It Snow had a world tour coming out of the uh, shutdown world tour of 2020, and our elves were able to travel uh, to many locations where the band was playing, and what they did while they were on this uh, tour is they took various photos and they sent them to us on our Santagram app. And with each picture they sent us, they sent us a they provided a question, a basic question about each picture that they'd like us to try to solve. So I guess they really want to see how well we are at OSINT and how we can use our skills. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work through these three images that they provided to us. So picture one, we've got an elf in front of a interesting looking landmark. Uh, picture two, uh, we have um, some snow, can't really tell what that is. And then picture three, well, there looks like a bus and a street sign. And so we can see below there the questions that come along with these pictures. So picture one is saying, what city was this picture taken in? That's probably we can figure that out. The next is, what is the name of the resort this picture was taken? Hmm, that might be fun. And then the last is, what's the name of the business that I am facing? This one looks like it should be a challenge. So let's go on. Let's focus back on this first picture that was provided to us. So as we can see here, there's some type of building kind of looks European in nature we've got our elf standing there with some folks in the background definitely looks like a kind of a high visibility tourist location so what should we do to find out where this picture was taken well since it looks like a recognizable landmark we're going to ask Uncle Larry and Uncle Sergey where we think this possibly could be and so going back to our open our OSINT framework uh, website we can go through the images video docs category go to images look at search and you'll see there's a quick search to Google Images. If you've never used Google before, welcome to the internet, but you may not know about this feature inside of Google, that inside of Google Images, where the uh, camera icon is, 
If you click that, it will allow you to either provide a URL or upload an image, which then will search um, across the internet and try to match like pictures to that. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Well, as you can see, when we take our picture that was provided to us in image one and we upload it, we get a couple references to some town hall squares, but we actually get the real building in Tallinn, uh, the capital of Estonia. It says it's the Tallinn Town Hall. So look at that. Using Google search and with this image, we are easily able to use our open source tools and locate where this elf was during the world tour. Moving on to the next picture, we see it's really going to be hard to tell what's going on in this image. We've got some snow. Looks like it's been manicured potentially with some type of uh, maybe snowmobile or snow machine and a, and a rake. It looks like potentially in the background there are some um, lifts for maybe potentially skiers, but it does reference the picture. It says what resort was the picture taken at? Well, it looks like Leaded Snow wanted to play at some interesting locations, so they picked a resort. So we're going to figure out where this is. I don't know if we're going to be able to find anything using our previous technique of Google search. So let's see what else the uh, OSINT framework may provide to us. Well, here we've got a tool inside of Image Videos and Docs under Images and Metadata called the EXIF tool. If, you have, if you're not familiar with metadata, I made the little headlines a few years back. It's actually, for uh, those of us in, in this field, it's an old, old term, but a lot of folks know what it is these days because of um, some recent media. So anyways, there's a tool called EXIF tool, and the EXIF tool allows you to read and write and edit the meta information of an image. You can download it from this website, uh, but you can also install it in any Linux distribution with your normal um, software repository install tools. So let's go ahead and use this tool you see that when we run EXIF tool with just the command EXIF tool on this image, we're provided a whole bunch of information that's stored in the image. And of interest to us today is the GPS lat long position. As you can see there, this image, uh, when the picture was taken, stored it, it was at 41 degrees, 6 minutes, and various number of seconds, 75 degrees, and 39 uh, minutes, and that's north and west. So using some other mapping, mapping software on the internet, entering our uh, information we provided, we can see that this plots to a lodge on Jack Frost Mountain Road in uh, Kinder Township or Kidder Township in Pennsylvania. Jack Frost Mountain. Huh. I wonder if uh, Let It Snow was making fun of our uh, villain from previous uh, Kringle Con and Holiday Hack Challenges. So as you can see here, we have a little warning that when you upload pictures to the internet, you need to be aware if your social media tool automatically strips geolocation data in it from it or you need you should do it yourself you also in your cameras if you use a phone or other type of cameras you can disable the ability to store geolocation data so using the EXIF tool looking at the metadata we were able to figure out where this picture was taken all right let's move on to our third and final image so this image really looks challenging so we've got our elf standing in front of a bus and a street sign you can't really tell much from the terrain. It looks like a, some evergreen trees. But I wonder what we could do here. Well, if you'll notice, if we kind of pay attention, we've got a bus with a seven-digit number. That's interesting. But we've got a URL. So let's, let's use that URL and maybe some other stuff from the image and figure out what we can do. So if we go to this URL, it'll automatically redirect to this site. And it apparently, FNSB is talking about the Fairbanks North Star Bureau. Well, actually, when you go to the slash max uh, URL, it's going to take us to the metropolitan area commuter system. And you can see the buses. Well, we know we got a bus. And so looking at the bus route, which is provided on this website, we're not really able to tell exactly where this is. But we do see the mention of Fifth Avenue. Well, in the Fairbanks main area, there's not much you can see on the, on the map about any stops near Fifth Avenue, but the North Pole area, which is adjacent to Fairbanks, Alaska, there's a mention of Eighth Avenue. So I think we should probably start looking in the North Pole area for our elf. So Google, spending some time looking at the map and doing Google Street View, we can see that the Richardson Highway, there is that street sign that we just saw, the Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue next right. 
If we look, this is where our elf is standing, looking over here at this building, and when we kind of pan over in Google Earth, or Google Street View rather, we see that this is the Santa Claus house. And Santa Claus house is a Santa Claus themed house and gift shop. But this definitely makes sense as a place that Let It Snow would want to perform. So as you can see, we are able to use landmarks and street signs to find uh, places. Yeah, not people. We're not stalking people. We're stalking elves. Okay. So as you can see, in summary, open source tools are very useful to find things on the web, on the web or on the internet in addition to image searches. But finding elves is always a challenge as they are always out there handing out bits to everyone. Now, only if Let It Snow had posted their tour dates online, this might have been a little bit easier. Well, I appreciate you coming to my KringleCon 4 talk. Just remember, open source tools are good, but there are some ways that you can protect yourself, as we've talked about. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you around the con. If you see me, I'm Mad-Eye. Be great to talk to you. Take care.